another Can You Buy video, the last time we determined that you could in fact purchase a van for under $750. Now I can't actually remember how much detail we went into on the video, but within a week of purchasing the vehicle, the uh, exhaust blew, the traction control, stability control, and ABS went, uh, lost a hubcap, the heat stopped working, the thermostat broke, so the car constantly thought it was overheating. Uh, and uh, naturally, with all those problems, we sold it for 1500 bucks. <laughs> so uh, after making such a great profit on the minivan, uh, we of course were in a position where we had $1,500 to buy our next vehicle. And at first we were going to go with a, uh, well, we thought about getting a Mustang, and we thought about getting a hot hatch, we were looking at vintage cars for a while, and then we figured, well, let's get... It's winter, there's starting to be snow on the ground. Let's get something all-wheel drive, like a Subaru, something perfect for the weather. Uh, and uh, I think you guys are going to be uh, very uh, pleasantly surprised with what we decide to purchase. Unfortunately, the Cadillac Kid was unavailable to do this video, so instead it's the Cadillac Grandad. And uh, as you've seen, I've purchased a Buick, a good, responsible vehicle. As my father used to say, if it ain't a mannequin, you should shoot at it. But it is a 2006 Buick Allure CX. And it is, if I may so so myself, an impressive piece of machinery. It is a front wheel drive 3800 series V6, which means it is the most reliable engine ever built, possibly in the world, definitely in America. I couldn't think of another memorable V6 whatsoever. It is connected to a four-speed automatic gearbox. It has very comfy cloth seats. It comes with a citizen's band radio so that when the Germans attack again, we can stay in communication. You might have noticed it is missing one hubcap. That is because any good vehicle should have scars, war wounds, just like my bad hip. Like any good vehicle, it has a easily recognizable emblem. And like any good vehicle, it has four doors. So when my stupid grandson says, Dad, can I borrow the car so a bunch of us can go drunk driving? They all fit. It also has a shit ton of airbags, so when they inevitably crash into a tree, they're fine. And it's American, built extra strong, so when they do hit that tree, it just cracks the bumper a little bit. Alright, so you guys met my grandfather. He's a little bit eccentric, but uh, he did purchase this 2006 Buick Allure for only $1,200. Now, $1,200 is $300 below our budget. Yes, I did that math. Which gave me $300 to get it road legal and inspected. Except, it was already road legal and inspected for just over a whole year. So for $1,200, we got a pretty nice car and we don't have to do any work to it for an entire year. So nice, in fact, that the taxable value of this vehicle is $3,600. Meaning, if I sell the car without putting any work into it, I will literally make triple my money. Now, seeing as I'm in a snowy parking lot, I'm going to show you one of the features this car has. As you can see, it's covered in snow. Traction control is on.
And despite putting the throttle all the way down, it did not allow me to lose traction. Now, let's turn that off because we both know I'm going to be having some fun today. Now, this car is clearly designed for old people. It is a very simplistic design. As you can see, the dashboard is flat with very basic buttons, all of which are labeled. And some of you might be thinking, oh, well, I want a touch screen, and, you know, well, fuck you. Because I actually like that it has simple buttons. Whenever I have fancy cars, I always find myself taking, like, a half hour just to figure out, like, how to turn on the fucking air conditioning or turn on the radio. With simple buttons like this, it's literally a knob. In fact, I actually think it's too complicated because the air conditioning and the heat is done by temperature, so you have to hit the button like 60 fucking times to get it from hot to cold. Well, fuck that. I actually would prefer to just have a big fat dial that you turn one way for heat and one way for cold. I, I don't see why that isn't good enough. But this Buick which is a sort of luxury brand. It's, if you're too good for a Chevy, but not quite good enough for a Cadillac, you would go with a Buick. And this is actually a base model, so it's not altogether that impressive. It has cloth seats, uh, automatic transmission. However, being that it is a Buick, it came standard with quite a few options. Uh, power steering has long been essential in all American cars, but it comes with air conditioning, Traction control, stability control, ABS, all that bullshit that I never actually used. <laughs> well then, let's see if you're still on. Yep. So yeah, it comes with the uh, traction control, stability control, ABS, all that bullshit that I actually turn off as soon as I get into the car. Uh, but more specifically, it has the entire GM information system built into a very simple controls so that will show me uh, fuel economy, mileage, all the all the dials the car doesn't have. You can actually access through the information system. Thought that woo woo was for me. Uh, including, uh, it's got time trip timers. Uh, <laughs> All that shit that you'll probably never actually use except maybe once when you first get the car to test it out. I need to fucking bolt this thing down. Ah oh, man, I should have used duct tape. Now you're probably thinking though that a car like this, that's so safe and reliable and, you know, smart, you probably can't have too much fun in it, but... wrong about that. Now, being a rather large vehicle, and I know I've said a lot about actually liking this car, because I genuinely do, uh, but it's not even that I just like driving the car, that I like the tech. I actually... My sash fell out. Old people clothes. It's that I actually like this car. It looks good to me. Like, the front is a little bit curvy, but it has a very smooth line that's distinguishable. It's small in the back, kind of a little bit higher, and then it kind of slopes down and gets bigger and bigger the further you go down the car. Yeah, it has a bit of a fat haunch, 
but from behind, it just, it works. It's got that thin roof that comes down to that fat hip, that fat ass. And that's what an American car, that's what a Buick is supposed to be, a fat ass. But it's just, it's got a smooth line down to the front that clums down. And I like it. And I even like the double headlights at the front. I love that Buick grill. That grill could go on an old car. It would fucking fit. But what I really love about these cars, unfortunately this doesn't have it, but on the higher up models, this trim piece comes in chrome. And so does this one. And with this as chrome and these two headlights here, the car actually looks alarmingly similar to my 72 Camaro. And you probably can't see it because these aren't chrome. But these are the bumperettes. Here's the headlight, here's the running light, and then the grill. The front end is actually designed like a 72 split bumper Camaro. And this is something that when I had my Camaro, I was parked next to a Buick Allure, and I was like, what the fuck? Those front ends look the same. And yes, they don't look exactly the same, but they're fucking similar. Somebody actually was designing this car, and it was like, you know what? Let's take a little bit of the Camaro and put it into this car. That's why it's white. Because whenever I'm driving my white Buick Allure, I am singing boys in the bright white sports car. Maybe it's just me, but does this wheel not look crooked as fuck to you?